Welcome back for another deep dive. Uh, this time we're tackling something um, you flagged as super relevant. Mastering interpersonal communication to, you know, get better outcomes. Yeah. We're diving deep into excerpts from a uh, simulation exercise designed for interpersonal communication skills development. <laughs> it's by uh, performance improvement expert Guy W. Wallace. Oh, okay. He's worked with companies like AT&T and General Dynamics. So this isn't just theoretical, you know, it's rooted in real world consulting. What really grabbed my attention and yours too, it seems, is this idea that there's no such thing as perfect communication. Right. It's more about like minimizing miscommunication, which is a pretty radical shift in perspective, don't you think? It really is. We often approach communication as if you know it's a simple transaction, mm -hmm. but uh, the reality is far more nuanced. Wallace brilliantly compares striving for uh, zero defects in communication to aiming for the same in, say, manufacturing. It um, highlights the need for constant self-checking and improvement. You know, <laughs> acknowledging that miscommunication is. Well, almost inevitable. That's a really powerful analogy. We often just assume the other person is receiving the exact message we're sending. So how do we like minimize those errors and become more effective communicators uh, if miscommunication is practically unavoidable? Wallace introduces four key communication behaviors that underpin his, uh, his entire approach. They're like the fundamental building blocks of any interaction. Okay, let's uh, unpack these building blocks. The first one is uh, giving information. Mm. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory. It's the telling part of a conversation. But here's where it gets um, interesting. Even giving information has its pitfalls. Mm. Are you providing the right amount of detail? Is it um, relevant to the listener's needs? Are you setting the right tone? These are all things we, uh, we need to consider. That's a great point. It's easy to get caught up in what we want to say and, uh, and forget to tailor it to the person we're speaking to. So what's the, uh, the next behavior? It's the flip side of uh, giving information. It's seeking information. Mm. This isn't just about asking any questions. It's about asking the right questions to gain clarity and, uh, and truly understand the other person's perspective. And I imagine the tone and delivery of those questions are just as important as the, you know, the questions themselves, right? Absolutely. The way you seek information can you know, greatly impact the response you receive. It's about um, being genuinely curious and, uh, and showing respect for the other person's knowledge and experience. So we've got giving information and seeking information, right. but uh, what comes next? The third behavior is um, testing, understanding, summarizing. Mm. This is uh, crucial for ensuring that everyone is on the same page. It's about confirming that you've, you've accurately understood the information shared and that there's no, uh, no room for misinterpretation. I can see how that would be particularly important in a professional setting where even like small misunderstandings can snowball into bigger problems. Right. So what's the final behavior? This is the one I'm uh, I'm most curious about. It's defend attack and it's um, it's a bit more complex. Well, Wallace acknowledges it's, you know, sometimes necessary, mm -hmm. especially in, you know, highly charged situations. Mm -hmm. He stresses that it frequently hinders um, hinders productive conversations. This is when we uh, we let our egos drive the interaction, leading to, you know, defensiveness, arguments and uh, ultimately a breakdown in communication. That, that makes a lot of sense. But how do we know when we're uh, slipping into defend attack mode? And <laughs> more importantly, how do we pull ourselves out? I'm guessing this is where those, um, those real world case studies come in. You got it. Wallace uses these cases to bring these behaviors to life mm -hmm. and show how they, uh, how they play out in different professional scenarios. Okay, before we dive into those case studies, let's let's pause for a second and make sure we're all on the same page. We've got these four communication behaviors, giving information, seeking information, testing, understanding, summarizing, and, uh, and defend attack. Mm. It sounds like each of them has its own set of potential pitfalls, even the ones that, you know, seem... Uh, seem pretty straightforward is that uh is that right that's a that's a really insightful observation you've hit the nail on the head even uh even seemingly simple behaviors like uh like giving information can be fraught with uh, with challenges we'll explore those nuances further as we um as we delve into those compelling case studies you mentioned perfect i'm uh I'm ready to dive in. Tell me, tell me everything. All right, let's uh, let's jump into the first case study. Wallace um, worked with product managers at uh, AT and T Network Systems. They were under like immense pressure to manage a huge product portfolio, and their success really, you know, hinged on how well different teams communicated. That sounds like a like a pressure cooker. How did Wallace's approach even begin to like address those high stakes communication challenges? He designed a simulation exercise. Uh, mirroring their real-world work 
yeah. forcing them to navigate, you know, complex planning, make decisions with um, limited information and and juggle conflicting priorities all while being like hyper aware of which communication behavior they were using. So it's like a it's like a flight simulator but for communication. That's mm-hmm. that's brilliant, but I imagine it was pretty pretty intense for those product managers. Did they um did they find it helpful even though it was, you know, probably stressful? Absolutely. Wallace found that um simulating these high pressure situations it was like crucial for revealing communication pitfalls they didn't even know they were falling into. Right. For example, some product managers realized they were, you know, stuck in that giving information mode, bombarding their teams with data without like pausing to seek information or uh, or test understanding. Right. This led to, you know, misunderstandings and slowed down the entire decision making process. It makes sense that, you know, under pressure, our instinct is to just keep giving information, trying to like gain control of the situation. But clearly that can backfire if it, you know, prevents us from really understanding what others are thinking and feeling. Exactly. And to make the simulations even more um, engaging and and prevent people from trying to, like, game the system, Wallace added an element of uh, gamification. Okay, now now you've got to tell me more about this. Gamification for something as, you know, crucial as communication. How how did that work? In this case, he used a um, a game board and a system of... uh, breaks good and bad that forced participants to like adapt their plans based on changing circumstances so it was like injecting a dose of reality into the simulation showing them that even the you know the best laid plans need to be flexible and and adaptable and and i bet that also highlighted the importance of of clear communication especially you know when things change unexpectedly precisely mm-hmm. now let's uh, let's move on to the next case study this time focusing on um labor relations at illinois bell they faced a a very different set of communication challenges mm-hmm. dealing with, uh, you know, unionized employees, mm-hmm. grievance meetings, even um, arbitration situations where even a slight miscommunication could have, you know, serious consequences. Talk about high stakes. It makes those product management simulations seem like a like a walk in the park. In those labor relations scenarios, what did like what did effective communication look like? This is where um, consciously shifting your communication profile becomes critical. Wallace observed that supervisors who you know relied too heavily on um, giving information, mm-hmm. they they often triggered defensiveness in the union representatives. Right. But those who shifted towards seeking information and testing understanding, really making an effort to to see things from the the other side, they were able to de-escalate tense situations. And uh, and find common ground. It sounds like they were able to like build trust and rapport yeah. by demonstrating a, a genuine willingness to listen and um, and understand the union's perspective. Did Wallace's work with uh, Illinois Bell offer any any specific tips on how to make those communication shifts effectively? One technique he um, he emphasized was the importance of of signaling your intention mm-hmm. to shift. Okay. For example, instead of just you know, launching into your perspective, you might say, um, help me understand your concerns mm. or uh, let me see if I'm you know, following you correctly. Fifth, These simple phrases can um, signal a shift from giving information to seeking information, mm. creating a, a more collaborative and, and less confrontational tone. Those subtle shifts in language are, are so powerful. It's like um, it's like switching tracks on a train. You need to, to do it carefully and uh, and deliberately to avoid a derailment. And speaking of avoiding collisions, I'm curious how how signaling can help us navigate those potentially, you know, volatile defend attack cycles. Let's say someone says something that immediately triggers your um, defend instinct. Right. Instead of firing back with a counter argument, you could um, signal a shift toward understanding by saying, "That's a, that's an interesting perspective." Yeah. C- can you tell me more about why you think that's the uh, the best course of action? It's like hitting the the pause button on your reaction and yeah. choosing a more you know thoughtful response by explicitly stating your intention to to understand. You create space for a more constructive dialogue, and that kind of um, self awareness is at the heart of becoming a more effective communicator, isn't it? Precisely. It's not just about you know what you say, yeah, but uh, but how you say it, and and more importantly how you. Um, how you respond to what others are saying. So we've covered a lot of ground here today from from debunking the myth of perfect communication to, you know, exploring these four key communication behaviors and how they uh, how they play out in real world scenarios. But what does this all like? What does this all mean for our listener? How can they um, how can they put these insights into practice in their own lives? The first step is um, simply raising your awareness. Start paying attention to your own communication patterns. 
<laughs> Which of these four behaviors do you uh, do you tend to rely on? Are there any situations where you, you know, consistently find yourself falling into those unproductive defend attack cycles? It's like becoming a, a scientist of your own communication. Once you've um, identified those patterns, okay. you can start, you know, experimenting with those signaling phrases we discussed, consciously shifting from uh, from one behavior to another to see what kind of like what kind of impact it has on your interactions. And, and remember, like any skill, effective communication takes practice. The more you, uh, you know, consciously apply these principles in your your daily interactions the more um natural and intuitive they will become it's not about becoming some kind of you know communication robot it's about developing a a, a deeper awareness of how you communicate and honing those skills to become a more effective you know leader teammate partner and uh and human being oh. well said and ultimately that's what makes this uh this deep dive so rewarding it's about equipping you with the tools to to navigate the complexities of human interaction yeah greater skill, empathy, and, uh, and authenticity. So as you head into your next meeting, crucial conversation, or even just a, you know, a casual chat with a friend, think about how you can consciously apply these, uh, these four key behaviors yeah. and signal your communication shifts to achieve a, a better outcome. It might feel a little, you know, strange or awkward at first, mm. but, uh, but trust us, mm -hmm. the results will speak for themselves. And, and who knows, you might even inspire those around you to become more mindful communicators as well. Now, that would be a, a truly impactful outcome. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the, uh, the fascinating world of interpersonal communication. Until next time, remember, even, um, even small shifts in communication can create a ripple effect of positive change. We'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah, the, the common thread running through all these examples is um, is the power of, you know, awareness. Right. By recognizing these four behaviors and, and understanding their impact, we can, like, make conscious choices to improve our communication. And, and that's a skill that's transferable to, you know, any aspect of our lives. Okay. What did you say? Absolutely. It's about um, moving from unconscious incompetence, where we're unaware of our communication pitfalls, to, you know, conscious competence, yeah. where we're... Uh, where we're actively using these behaviors to our advantage. You mentioned something earlier that I wanted to circle back to, the idea of um, signaling your your communication shifts. It sounds like a simple tweak, but but I can see how it could be incredibly uh, incredibly powerful in practice. It really can. Imagine you're in a in a meeting, <laughs> and and someone's you know been dominating the conversation with giving information, right? Instead of you know interrupting or disengaging you could signal a shift to seeking information by saying something like before we uh, before we move on it I, i'd love to hear from others on the team what are your what are your thoughts on this this approach it's like um it's like putting on your turn signal when changing lanes it lets everyone know what you're about to do and and helps prevent those communication collisions and speaking of avoiding collisions i'm, I'm curious how how can signaling help us navigate those those potentially you know volatile defend attack cycles Let's say someone says something that that immediately triggers your um, defend instinct. OK. Instead of firing back with a counter argument, you could um, you could signal a shift towards understanding by saying that's an that's an interesting perspective. Yeah. Can, you, can you tell me more about why you think that's the uh, that's the best course of action? It's like hitting the hitting the pause button on your, your reaction and choosing hmm. a more. Uh, a more thoughtful response by by explicitly stating your intention to to understand. You create space for a more you know constructive dialogue, and that kind of um, self awareness is at the heart of becoming a more effective communicator. Precisely, it's not just about you know what you say, but um, but how you say it, mm -hmm. and more importantly, how you respond to to what others are saying. So we've we've covered a lot of ground today right. from from debunking the myth of, you know, perfect communication to exploring these uh, these four key communication behaviors and, and how they play out in, you know, real world scenarios. But um, what does this all mean for our, our listener? How can they uh, how can they put these insights into practice in their their own lives? The, the first step is um, simply raising your awareness. Start uh, start paying attention to your own communication patterns. Right. Which of these four behaviors do you uh, do you tend to rely on? Are there any situations where you um, where you consistently find yourself falling into those unproductive defense attack cycles? Mm -hmm. It's like you know becoming a scientist of your own communication. It really is, yeah. Once you've uh, once you've identified those patterns, you can start you know experimenting with those signaling phrases we discussed. 
consciously shifting from one behavior to to another to see what kind of impact it has on your interactions. It's about like being intentional, right? Like, uh, Not just, you know, going through the motions. And and remember, like any skill, effective communication takes practice. Mm. The more you uh, the more you consciously apply these principles in your your daily interactions, the more um, the more natural and intuitive they will become. So it's not about, you know, becoming some kind of communication robot. It's about um, developing a, a deeper awareness of how we communicate. Yeah. And and really honing those skills to become more effective, you know, leaders, teammates, partners, and, and just better communicators overall. Well said. And, and ultimately, that's what makes, you know, exploring these ideas so rewarding. It's about equipping ourselves with the tools to navigate the, the complexities of human interaction yeah. with greater... Um, you know, skill, empathy, and authenticity. Absolutely. And and that's what we've tried to do here today, you know, give you a new perspective on communication and, and some practical tools to, to take your skills to the next level. It's been a pleasure diving into these ideas with you. Likewise. And to our listeners, thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive. We hope you found it valuable. Until next time, remember, even small shifts in communication can have a big impact. We'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.